One dog shot, another is poisoned with antifreeze. Now tonight, the search is on in southern Indiana. Who did it? It's our top story on the WHAS 1119. Hello, everybody. I'm Doug Prophet. The Utica, Indiana Police Department called residents together tonight to put them on alert. The attacks happening in the very same yard just feet away. WHAS 1119's Taylor Woods and photojournalist Addie Hill talked to neighbors and attended the town meeting. The Utica Police Department is advising residents to keep a close eye on their pets after different reports of a dog shot at another dog poison with antifreeze just days apart. It was around 7 o'clock Sunday night when police say someone shot 11 month old Rottweiler Frida in her backyard. We all just hear her yelping and I run outside and there's blood all over her neck. Nathaniel Badgett contacted Utica police as he drove Frida to Jefferson Animal Hospital. That's where he found out the kind of bullet she was shot with. They came back and said it was a hollow point 22 and that they think that she was shot just because she was a Rottweiler. X-rays show the bullet in her neck. The vet was not able to remove the bullet since it sits so close to her spine. If she didn't have that, that bullet hole in her neck, you wouldn't even thought that she had been shot. Nearly two days later, the Utica Police Department received another report of a different dog poisoned with antifreeze in the same yard. Wednesday night, officers brought the community together to discuss the cases, advising residents to keep their pets inside as much as possible. We've had one confirmed poison and one unconfirmed poison. So we're still trying to work on the other two. Um, it's just a lot of hearsay. That's what we called the meeting tonight to kind of weed out. We've heard so much. Police say they have two persons of interest possibly responsible for these two incidents. A man and a minor who has a criminal background of shooting animals with rifles. One on security camera footage that was in and around the time of the shooting. He came before the shooting, disappeared, then came back after the shooting had occurred. Marcy Nifong lives near the house where the dog was shot and the other poisoned. It just sickens me to know that an individual can do this to animals. Nifong owns three dogs and cats. She fears for her mother and her animals because they live right next door to where the incidents happen. I just want whoever's doing this to get caught. Remaining hopeful the cases get solved soon. In Utica, Taylor Woods, WHAS 11 night team on your side. So as you can see, getting the word out tonight, the Utica Police Department is informing residents to look for continued updates on their Facebook page. They're also urging pet owners to bring the water bowls inside. Do not leave them outside in the Utica area. Right now, new at 11, more search warrants were filed in the case of the former Clark County, Indiana Sheriff Jamie Knoll. This time, the focus is on another former sheriff, the former Scott County, Indiana Sheriff Kenny Hubanks. Hubanks is not charged, but he's accused of receiving taxpayer money to his private business and not declaring it on his taxes. Focus reporter Travis Breeze tells us what we know about the alleged scheme. This is Kenny Hubanks speaking to WHAS 11 in 2018 while he was still Scott County Sheriff. In search warrants, state investigators say he had a multi-year profitable relationship with Jamie Knoll. Knoll personally approved roughly $280,000 out of the jail commissary fund to pay Hubanks Enterprises for consulting work. The state says the LLC has never filed an income tax return. That could be legal if Hubanks and his wife had declared the income on their own joint taxes, but state investigators say that did not happen. Investigators also interviewed a Clark County Sheriff's employee who says Hubanks refused to fill out a 1099 form because he would be required to pay taxes. The same employee brought this up to Sheriff Jamie Knoll, who told her not to give Hubanks the tax form. Hubanks was also an on and off employee for the Clark County Sheriff's Office. In another document, he allegedly watched an employee organize the file room there and instructed inmate workers to remove a stack of boxes labeled commissary. Investigators have been unable to find any commissary records from 2018. I spoke to Kenneth Hubanks on the phone Wednesday and he refused to give any comment. Travis Breeze for the WHAS 11 night team on your side. And in another search warrant filed today, the state is asking to search a PNC bank in New Albany. Investigators in Indiana say Jamie Knoll and his EMS companies had an unknown bank account there that was used for Medicaid benefits. 
A Jefferson County grand jury has indicted this man. He's Adam Todd Sanders on murder and other charges connected to a crash that killed a Louisville Metro police officer's wife last month. Police say Sanders was driving under the influence when he hit the other car on Taylorsville Lake Road in far eastern Jefferson County. Erin Dita Lane died in that crash. Her 14-year-old daughter was also hurt, but was expected to make a full recovery. Sanders is being held on a $250,000 bond, but only needs to post $25,000 of it to be released. The former Louisville Catholic school teacher facing child pornography charges has been indicted by a federal grand jury. The grand jury indicted Jordan Fouts for possession and distribution of child pornography after investigators say he manipulated students' photos into explicit images. Fouts was a part-time religion teacher at St. Stephen Martyr Catholic School that's near Audubon Park when police say he shared the images with undercover officers. He's expected to be back in court next week. Nearly four years after the ACLU filed a lawsuit against Louisville Metro Police, the case was back before a federal judge today. The lawsuit is focused on LMPD's use of force and alleged intimidation against protesters in the summer of 2020. The ACLU argues the case should be a class action lawsuit, but during a hearing today, defense attorneys argue the case shouldn't be heard anymore. They cited LMPD policies put in place following the civil unrest. Following the hearing, the ACLU spoke to the timeliness of the hearing with city and DOJ leaders just beginning consent decree negotiations yesterday. We hope that overall the LMPD will agree to whatever reforms DOJ believes is necessary to, to get into line with the Constitution and, and, and live up to their promises to protect the people of Louisville. The judge made no rulings on any motions presented during today's hearing. An update on the case is expected sometime next week. All new tonight, the family of Louisville police officer Nick Wilt says that he is showing progress in his recovery. Wilt was shot in the head while showing incredible bravery, running directly toward the old National Bank during the mass shooting last April. The Wilt family shared the update on the Louisville Metro Police Foundation Facebook page. They say Wilt has shown a gradual increase in life skills and is showing signs of semi-independency. He is also now able to walk with the use of a cane. Despite the improvements, family members say Wilt still faces challenges, particularly with the use of his left arm. They ended the update by saying the family, quote, extends their heartfelt appreciation for the outpouring of support and continues to request thoughts and prayers for his complete and uncomplicated recovery. Their resilience remains as they navigate the path ahead. Right now, all new on the night team, a new tourism visitor center opened today in downtown Jeffersonville, Indiana, near the Big Four Bridge. But longtime mayor Mike Moore skipped the ribbon cutting and is pushing back tonight, telling WHAS 11 News that a visitor center is a poor choice to fill that space downtown. WHAS 11 night team's Alex Dieterer and photojournalist Aspen Hester covered the big moment in Jeffersonville today and found out why the mayor is against it. Three, two, after nearly eight years, the new Southern Indiana Visitor Center is officially open, right in the middle of downtown Jeffersonville. We're a block from the, from the river. We're a block from Big Four Station Park with a million pedestrians coming across every year. As downtown Jeffersonville grows and is revitalized, so is the tourism here in Southern Indiana. Also this week on Tuesday, Jeffersonville Mayor Mike Moore touted the growth of the city and the booming tourism in his state of the city address. We've transformed Jeffersonville into a city where so many want to visit and even more want to call home. Just look around Jeffersonville and you see a city on the move. But the popular mayor was noticeably missing from the ribbon cutting. We asked him for comment and he sent us a statement revealing he's not happy with the new visitor center. Moore said, quote, I love all the tourism Jeffersonville has benefited from the last several years, but the city was promised by the developer of that building that a nice high end restaurant would be locating there. I think this is a poor choice for the Tourism Bureau to have office space to hand out brochures to people walking around our downtown, encouraging them to visit Jeffersonville, when in fact those visitors are already here. He went on to say that the new center sits on the most valuable intersection in downtown Jeffersonville. 
The same reason Southern Indiana Tourism Executive Director Jim Epperson says the location was chosen, central to downtown and high foot traffic for tourists. Um, over a half billion dollars in visitor spending in 2022, um, about 6,000 jobs in Southern Indiana rely on that money that's left behind by visitors. In response to the mayor's statement, Epperson said, quote, it's unfortunate that Mayor Moore was unable to make it to our event. We look forward to continuing our more than 30 years of service to Southern Indiana from our new location. For now, it's welcome to Southern Indiana. In Jeffersonville, Alex Dieterer, the WHAS 1119 on your side. Epperson also told us, by the way, that Southern Indiana Tourism is hoping to expand visitor centers and wants to open one in both downtown New Albany and downtown Clarksville.